Okay, this is a video on uh, Euler's method of approximating first order differential equations. Um, I did one in class. Here's another one. Uh, let's say it's uh, x prime um, equals, we could do something crazy like t times sine x. Uh, let's do something like this. So the idea is we want to end up with uh, a column of time. We want to end up with a column of x and a column uh, with x primes. And we need to specify some things. We need an initial condition. What does x start at? Um, we might say just one for now. And we need um, a delta t. So let's start with point one. And so we're going to populate this first column. We'll start with zero for time. And we're going to enter a formula. And we want to take the cell above and add a specific amount every time. And in spreadsheets, we use dollar signs to make sure that the variables uh, don't change as we copy the cells. So dollar sign F, dollar sign 2, whoops, 3. Um, refers to this cell over here. And uh, let me show you how that works. So as I, let me drag and populate this column. And back up. If I click on one of these cells, you see that it still refers to the cell above the point, what the previous time, but then it increments at the same amount. It's still adding the same point one. Right? We want that to happen. Now, we have an initial condition, that's 1, and actually, uh, let's not do that so we can change it later. Let's write uh, dollar sign $E, dollar sign 3, right? so it refers to this cell, and we can calculate the initial rate of change from those two things. Right? So this is going to be equal to our initial time, which is 0, times sine of our initial value of x. Not surprising, it's zero. Okay, now this tells us, this can help us figure out our next approximate x. So this is going to be where we used to be, we were at 1, plus our rate of change times our increment, which is this uh, dollar sign f dollar sign 3. It's the same amount over here. So I was at 1. Nothing was happening. I'm still at 1 a moment later. Now we can calculate our new rate of change. So, and actually, um, we can just go back up here. Right, This still applies. This is the spreadsheet version of this differential equation. So I can just copy this down, and it of course, it's kind of silly at first. It doesn't uh, fill in everything. We have to go back up and populate the other column. Right? And it uh, oh, should have updated. Well, let's, let's see what happens. It's kind of curious. I don't actually know the solution to this at the moment. I just made it up. Um, so the, uh, let's graph this. This is the next um, useful part. We have all these numbers. So let's select these two columns. And uh, whoops. And uh, we'll go to insert. And uh, we'll put a chart. And uh, well that, that's interesting. If I have nothing else. Um, chart types. Uh, let's do a scatter. And insert. Uh, okay. So there's our graph. And so that's kind of interesting. Uh, it levels off, uh, which would make sense why the derivative ended up being zero and while the x values got stagnant. So now we can play this a little bit, right? Um, what if my initial condition had been different? Uh, what if it had been 0.01, closer to zero? Yeah, that's. Fascinating. <laughs> what if it had been uh, 2? Same kind of thing. 
What about uh, 3.5? Very interesting. That was 23.5. Um, and we can also change our time. So we can make this uh, a finer, 0 0.01, which only gives us a small portion. Right, that's interesting, right? So there's something like, uh, looks like exponential decay. Uh, well, not decay, but uh, in, in a sense, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> uh, we could do 0 0.2, uh, coarser. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, we'll have to explore this a little later. So what's happening out here? Um, this is fascinating. There's going to be a separate video about this all together. Uh, chances are this is due to the sine function. Um, what happens if it's 1? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we notice there's something uh, something happening here, right? Um, let's go back. This is pretty informative, actually. So 0.4, we're below. And 0.5, we're above. And 0.6, we're below. And so if you think a little bit about this, we're approximating slopes here. And uh, if our approximation is too coarse, what happens with sine? The well, sine flips between um, plus or minus 1 and 0 in the middle um, in a relatively short order, right? from uh, essentially 0 to 6. And so if our time is too coarse and we're jumping around too much, then our slope might jump around too much. And uh, if we get a big enough negative slope to give us a negative x, that could affect sine or, or all kinds of interesting things. So you don't have a lot of uh, faith in that picture. Uh, a lot more faith in something uh, like this, which dies off. We will be able... Uh, actually, can we... Uh, this is something that we can't solve explicitly. We can get a bit more information on later. <coughs> um, so we'll have to talk about this one. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll, I'll pause here, and I'll do another example of a, another differential equation.